Welcome everyone. To get centered this week, we're going to be looking at a wonderful passage. If you want to do some extra reading, um, the recommended readings this week are Exodus 3, um, verse 2 in particular, and the 8th Psalm. So if you want to do some extra readings, please go ahead and do that. Um, but then we'll have the one that I'm reading out loud today, which is Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. Let's light a candle and read our passage. Let's listen, listen, listen. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. God's word for God's people. This is an absolutely beautiful passage and one that uh, I feel like in different seasons of my life that it speaks to me in such different ways. I'm sure it does for you as well. Um, but every time I read, read it, um, I'm humbled. Um, knowing the, the magnitude of life and all the machinations that go on well beyond um, what is in my control. Um, and just a deeper understanding of the reality of life and God's place in it. Now the story I like to tell myself um, about my life sometimes is that um, with God by my side there will only there will be times of birthing and planting and healing and building up and dancing and laughing and all the the wonderful parts of those um, dyads that we just read about so all those parts about dying and plucking and killing and weeping and mourning um, are just are something that uh, instead of being a part of life there's something god helps me to try to avoid or can be avoided if i live in a godly way um, that's kind of the story that sometimes I catch myself um, still falling into. Sometimes, you know, whether consciously or subconsciously, we do that. People of faith can believe a kind of uh, what's called a prosperity gospel or a, a prosperity teaching that says, if you associate and you align yourself with God, then you won't know pain or sorrow, but only riches and happiness. And I think we kind of, we know that's a lie that we know that um, they're trying to sell us something. But it's still tempting to think that because we really want to believe that. So when good things happen, I might want to think, yay, God is happy with me. Things are good. Um, God is smiling on me. But when bad things happen, I might then wonder, um, what have I done wrong? Is, is God punishing me? Um, what, is, what is happening here? And so it is this trap that we can get into. Now, the Bible um, doesn't state such a simple equation for life, for success and happiness and riches, or even trial and tribulation and difficulty. Now, there will be verses, of course, um, that, that we read associating a blessed life with God and, and, and describing that in many different ways. But there are just as many passages in the Bible that reflect the harsh realism and difficulties of life. I mean, think about um, the story we read in church uh, recently, the difficulties that Sarah um, and Abraham had as, as they discerned the will of God and tried to understand what the future would hold. With Joseph um, that we are, are doing this week and get, how he gets thrown in a hole by his brothers, uh, the people of, of God were enslaved in, in Egypt for a very long time. Um, they were exiled from their land. And as Christians, of course, in our own story, the reality of the cross, 
um, the important role in, in the story of our faith of such um, a brutal happening um, in history. In other words, life with God doesn't mean that there's not going to be trials and tribulations. And, and we know that, but sometimes it's good to remind ourselves that the struggles and hurts, um, the good times um, and the joys are, are all a part of life. It's part of the seasons of life. There will be times and seasons in which we're called um, in those moments um, not to have necessarily success or failure, but to do what is most faithful in the moment. As we discern and as we figure out whether it's with the Bible, um, looking into the what the scripture says, um, talking to people we trust in our community, people of faith, whatever it is, whatever season it is, we're trying to do the most faithful thing. Life is so hard and complex with all the different seasons that will be there. And the question is not, God loves me, God loves me not, depending on the season. No, that's not how it works. It is about faithfulness, enduring faithfulness. Through whatever season of life we're experiencing, the question is, will I remain faithful to God's call on my life? Who God has called me to be? Who God has called us to be as a community? And the second part of that is remembering and trusting in God's everlasting faithfulness that remains with us no matter what direction we go in. That God is always faithful. Great is thy faithfulness, whatever the season. Our prayer today from Ash and Starlight Prayers for the Chaos and Grace of Daily Life by Ariane Braithwaite Lane is called, this prayer is called, When I Need to See the Beauty Before Me. Let us pray together. Creator God, you make everything beautiful in its time. Please open my soul, awakening one, to the surprising beauty and timing of this season. I need you to draw me in from my distraction. I want to witness your brightness in the greening earth and bird song as well as the neighbor walking past or the child's sidewalk chalk. I want to pause in awe at the burning bushes in my friend's well-timed email or the stranger's unexpected kindness. The line in my book that awakens my soul or the masterful frost pattern on my kitchen window. God, I want to journey through this day with an awareness bringing gratitude and celebration, fresh hope in what you are creating and new eyes for the treasure buried beneath me. You promise that birth and death, planting and harvest, embrace and solitude, all have their place in this world and my life. A beautiful faith allows things to unfold and grabs onto the grace of daily glimpses. Loving God, I rest in you and your working to make all things beautiful, someday, somehow. You are the one who showed true beauty in human life. Amen.